my voice is audible Can you please confirm is the voice clear? Can you please confirm is the voice clear? Now is it clear? Please confirm. I think. I'll wait a minute Get to find it.
So we made an alternative arrangement, please. Can you please kindly confirm whether the audio is clear? Okay, we'll be starting just in a minute. So, if anyone wanted to join, please, okay. I'm sharing the link in the Telegram group as well. So very good evening everyone. So first of all, uh, the point of conducting this live sessions will be, you will be receiving a series of uh, around 10 lectures, maybe 7 to 8, 10 lectures, depending on the time and availability. So there will be a continuous sessions for 7 to 10, means 7 to 10 days, there will be a continuous sessions that will be conducted. These sessions are strictly focusing the new uh, syllabus which is announced by the ICA regarding the subject advanced financial management with respect to the migrated change syllabus. These videos are applicable for those students who are writing the examinations for the first time for the May 2024 exam. For them, this particular lecture will be very useful because Advanced capital budgeting, as per my estimate, should not come for less than 10 to 12 marks in exam. A big 12 marks question or maybe more than that can come in examination from advanced capital budgeting. Okay. So this is point number one. My concern is all about the capital budgeting chapter. Because when you compare the old syllabus and the new syllabus migration, the only chapter which was added at a huge extent, I mean, Remaining here and there, some theory concepts are removed, some concepts are added, those okay. But especially when it comes to, as a chapter when you con consider, there is only one chapter which is a completely new chapter that is being added is the advanced capital budgeting. That's a point number one. So, those students who have already taken AFM coaching, I mean SFM coaching elsewhere or with me, anyone. So maybe they have taken the coaching elsewhere or they have taken the coaching from me. Migrated syllabus, I mean the additional part of the syllabus, I am going to give three chapters. Capital budgeting, next one is derivatives, the theory uh, area like they added real options and swaptions, real options and swaptions. So I am going to make video on real options as well where they have given one question theoretically but one old rtp question is there okay that i will solve definitely if exam question have to come that will be definitely coming from that area okay uh, that will be real options using uh, black scholes model so that is one area i am going to cover first consider advanced capital budgeting which will be mounting definitely for 10 to 12 marks in the coming examination so with an optimistic viewpoint of 12 marks in exam let us not take this chapter light. Okay, number one. Number two, real options we are going to cover. We are going to cover real options. Once after covering real options, I am going to cover risk management chapter in YouTube live. For the risk management chapter. Okay, because so many students are also asking that, sir, please make a video on risk management continuously in my Telegram group. Also, I am getting a message. So, regarding that, I am going to make a video also on risk management chapter. So therefore, there are three topics which I am going to make. One is advanced capital budgeting. Another one is a real options, merging the derivatives with capital budgeting. And third one will be 
risk management chapter okay now this is the first agenda part number one today we are going to begin with advanced capital budgeting okay so as a advanced capital budgeting we are going to start with understanding the learning objectives of this particular chapter since this is a newly added chapter into the syllabus 100% question will come from the study material questions okay if not 100 i can't like a doctor i also can't tell 100% with an optimistic percentage but i can definitely surely i believe that definitely one question from the ism they have given 27 to 28 questions okay from that at least one question will appear in the coming exam however they may not lift the numbers as it is they may change the numbers here and there and small conceptual change may come so therefore first target number one we have to complete advanced capital budgeting from the ism all 27 questions if you solve 100 percent confidently you can appear in the examination okay that is a point number one i wanted to tell secondly first let us see what are all the learning objectives of this particular chapter please see the screen see there this video already uploaded in the google drive but still please everyone listen to this lecture because some changes i am going to make in this lecture in this live okay see there first point number one understanding the learning objectives of this chapter this document what you are seeing on the screen has already been shared in my telegram group so therefore you need not worry about it you need not write anything as of now everything is available in my telegram group telegram group details are given in the comment section below in the description below i have given the telegram channel details you can just log in into that and you can check okay first advanced capital budgeting this is the area you can expect a 12 marks question from this particular area in the coming examinations for ca final that's a part number one secondly this particular chapter called as advanced capital budgeting has the following learning objectives sensitivity analysis inflation abandonment and replacement decision base case npv adjusted npv probability analysis certainty equivalent risk adjusted discount rate simulation technique decision tree and miscellaneous these are the areas of consideration in this particular chapter okay just a minute okay so from the point of view of importance those who are writing for the may 24 exams i will tell the important areas in this chapter first important in the sense what those which makes you uncomfortable when doing the problems because conceptual clarity is very much important to do the concepts regarding the problems like inflation capital budgeting replacement decision base case npv adjusted npv simulation decision tree these are the five areas where just mugging up the concepts tables performa and formats will not going to help you you must understand the logic behind it if any amount is kept you should know how that amount came logic analysis interpretations of the numbers everything you need to understand with regard to five areas inflation replacement base case npv adjusted npv simulation technique decision tree approach okay in this also it list another two topics are there replacement decision decision tree okay replacement decision and decision tree why those two are very very important let me tell inflation in capital budgeting replacement decision and decision tree sorry three topics inflation replacement decision tree even in the five those are very important because those are having high level of complexity okay I will give you one example. Institute ISM la book back problems were given, which we call as a practical problems. In that, highest number of problems are given in replacement and abandonment decision. Highest number of questions are there. Okay. They merged these two concepts with the base case NPV and adjusted NPV concept. So please 
Listen first. Know the facts and then join live. First point. This live sessions from today will be concentrating exclusively on understanding all the concepts in the advanced capital budgeting. Okay. Once after that, we will be going into the area called as real options, then risk management. Okay. And these will be uploaded on the Google Drive as well for both EOB as well as for the regular students. Okay. That's all. So the only intention is I don't want it to sell classes in the name of migration. Those who have taken the SFM classes already, these live sessions will help you to concentrate on the new syllabus as well. No separate classes will be sold on migration because there is no great syllabus change in the migration. I don't want to take your money. Okay. Point number one, and I don't have any intention to sell any migration courses. Okay. Let's see. First point number one. Just a minute. Yes. First point before I start, are you all ready? Those who join the live, please put one yes there. We will start directly with the topic. Today's target is we have to first complete replacement decision. Then I will explain you the basics of inflation and capital budgeting. Please put one yes. Your feedback counts a lot. Please also share this to your friends. Those who are writing in the May 24. So point number one, let us have a clarity on the concepts clearly, okay? See here, point number one, when it comes to the concept of advanced capital budgeting, name lone clear, advanced capital budgeting, means first it is a capital budgeting. So without having a basic clarity on inter-level capital budgeting, it is immensely difficult for anyone to Understand what is going on in the advanced level. When the advanced will be easy, if you know the basics, advanced will be easy. Basics say no clarity means from here the concept of advanced you can understand. With that motive, for all the regular students and EOB students, I have uploaded capital budgeting inter classes as well. Okay, as you already know, in the Google Drive also I kept it. Inter classes I kept there. Okay, not one hour, two hour, 49 hours of CA inter capital budgeting I uploaded to you. Such that whenever you find time, you will understand the basic chapters or basic concepts of capital budgeting. Okay, next. But sir, we joined only live. We didn't take the EOB classes or regular classes or we had the coaching elsewhere. So in that situation, what will be the remedy for us? In such situations also not at all a problem. For you people, what I have done is, I have given complete written notes on this. So this written notes will be enough for you to understand the basics of capital budgeting. Okay, let us see. So, the basics of capital budgeting inter syllabus will cover the following issues payback, discounted payback, annual rate of return, NPV, IRR, profitability index, modified NPV and modified IRR. This modified NPV, modified IRR concept. Eh? Base case in PV and adjusted in PV in advanced level. Capital rationing, life disparity and timing disparity. E life and timing disparity, eh? the first topic we are going to do now, replacement decision. Means the concept of replacement decision you can understand if and only if you know the basic idea behind life and timing disparity in basics of capital budgeting. Okay. Sir, I didn't read, sir. I didn't I don't know what is this life and timing disparity. What is my situation? I have given entire notes regarding the life and timing disparity. Okay. Here. Yeah. Replacement decision. Life disparity refers CA inter notes. So CA inter notes is there on capital budgeting. Now I will be putting it in the telegram group as well. If you want, you can just download and you can refer to the notes on capital budgeting at inter level. Okay. But what I have done is I have kept the CA inter capital budgeting content here. First of all. What is my syllabus? Advanced capital budgeting, okay. What are the concepts included? In this chapter, we are going to learn three things. 
inflation in capital budgeting techniques in capital budgeting replacement and abandonment decision when it comes to inflation in capital budgeting techniques in capital budgeting there are two types there are two types inflation one topic techniques in capital budgeting la three concepts are there statistical conventional miscellaneous in statistical probability distribution variance coefficient of variation conventional risk adjusted discount rate certainty equivalent miscellaneous sensitivity analysis scenario analysis simulation analysis simulation lo two types again basic simulation monte carlo simulation lastly the miscellaneous the last one is decision tree approach okay so these are all the various areas applicable for your examination sequence of study so in what sequence we are going to study this first i am going to cover replacement and abandonment decision next i will cover inflation in capital budgeting lastly i will cover special techniques so today's session i will cover this next session i will cover this and i will also start with decision tree decision tree will take two and a half full hour session because horrible problems are there in decision tree it takes lot of time okay so replacement inflation and special concepts like decision tree once that is completed then we will be taking up simulation and then risk adjusted discount rate certainty equivalent all those concepts will come in line okay let us start everyone in the class please keep the heading in your notes replacement decision please keep a heading in the notes replacement decision replacement decision okay first do one thing do one thing uh i will be putting this on full screen i am putting this on full screen please take a snap please take a snap also this okay well, let's begin see here <clears throat> first one replacement decision let me first give you a overview of what we are going to do in this areas first with regard to advanced capital budgeting as a chapter 
Number one. First, I will cover example illustrations. Example illustrations. These will be the samples. Means the entire concept of replacement decision. I will take one illustration with a sample and I will explain. Secondly, after explaining through illustrations, secondly, we will take ISM questions. Okay? ISM means what? Two types of questions we are going to do. Illustrations in ICI material, practical problems in ICI material. Both will account for 35 problems. Okay? Every model. Let us take replacement decision. Replacement decision, the first I will explain using one example. I have written that example also. So then how you got that question? Those are all taken from past examinations. Sir, when capital budgeting came for the first time, how you have passed questions? 2017, the new syllabus came. At that time, they removed capital budgeting. Previously, before 2017, capital budgeting is there in the syllabus. They removed and reinserted. Okay, institute has that legacy of removing and reinserting. Okay, they will do like that in the syllabus. So law is gone now. Again, after four or five years, they will again bring back like that. Okay, they do mistakes and they will rectify the mistakes because rectification of errors is the birthright of chart accounting. Na? So, therefore, uh, those questions, I will take examples. Okay, let us begin. RLC Institute, how they got 27 questions in uh, advanced capital budgeting when this is the first attempt? Those are all lifted from the old questions. Okay, let us begin. So, first we need to understand what is the concept of replacement decisions, how it actually works, okay, how questions can come in examination regarding, okay, this uh, replacement decision, see here, there is a company, this company is involved in printing business, involved in printing business, printing of what, printing of books, printing of glossing sheets, Printing of, printing of any kind of, what to say, these vinyl sheets, printing business lead is involved. This company is involved in printing. Therefore, it uses extensive machines for printing. Okay, it has a very big printing machine. Point number one. My business is printing machine. Business is perpetual, means what? Going concern. Business will continue for so long period, okay, till when foreseeable future, I will not close the business. So, first point, business is for 2 years or 3 years or 5 years or 10 years or perpetual, perpetual. Business means company, company life is perpetual, company is in printing business, company is in printing business, printing requires a machine, this is the printing machine, okay, one thing is clear. How many years you require printing machine? I require printing machine for perpetual period. How many years foreseeable future I want printing machine? So one thing is clear. We want printing machine for perpetual period. But that printing machine will have a life. Okay. Say for example, I purchased printing machine number one. Okay. Next, this life will be five years. After five years, what I have to do? I should abandon total machinery. I should replace this with another machine. I should replace it with another machine. That's how questions are coined regarding replacement decision chapter topic. Means company wanted to replace. Replacement is sure. But the question is when to replace. Question is when to replace. This is called as Timing of replacement. This is called as what of replacement? Timing of replacement. Replacement is inevitable. 100% I need to do the replacement. But the question is not on whether to replace or not. Question is on when to replace. Okay. This is on a timing. When to replace the machine is a question now. Okay. On that only questions will be tested. So in examination, first when a question on replacement comes, First to focus is on timing, okay, original life of the asset, you should know, okay, listen now, how the questions are coined, they will give you a machine, they will give you a machine, they will give 
estimated cash flows of 1, 2, 3, like that, some number of years. Okay? They will give the revenues, they will give the costs, they will give you scrap. Three information they will give. Revenues out of the machine, cost incurred to operate the machine, and the scrap value if you sell the machine. Three informations they will give. You should calculate whether to replace in the first year is better, second year is better, third year is better. Okay? You should answer which replacement is correct replacement. Which replacement is what? Correct replacement. Okay? First point number one understood. First, let us take one illustration. Sir, what is all these notes? CA enter capital budgeting, understanding the concept of EAB and EAC. EAB and EAC. Okay. Sir, I, I will do one thing. Those who have not taken coaching from me, I mean, in the EOB or regular, they might not have any clue as to what is this EAB, EAC. Therefore, I will summarize the concept. Don't expect me to explain deep into the analysis. Okay. Here, some people from CA Inter are also listening to the lecture now. Okay. You can ask them, they will tell. Capital budgeting for Inter, I have taken 56 hours totally. Okay. So, in-depth discussions are made at CA Inter level. I can't do like that now. But in 10 minutes, I will complete whatever is EAB, EAC. Once we start the problem on replacement decision. Okay. Let us see. See here. This is the example. This is an exam question came for 8 marks. Okay. Old question. A company is there. I, sir, big question is there. I removed all the scrap information. What is required for solving the question I kept there. See there. And I guarantee you. I promise you all. Listen to this question and concept clearly. Take ISM. You can do any replacement decision question given. Okay. Let's see. Discount rate of a company is 10%. Cash flow details. This particular machine has a life of 3 years. Okay. That does not mean you need to maintain the machine for 3 years. You may replace within any number of years. Outlay. I should purchase at 1000. I should purchase at what? 1000. After purchasing at 1000, first year revenue expected is 900. 800, 700 for the third year. As you start using the machine day by day, usage will be more. Okay? Because of heavy usage, production process will slow down. Okay? Therefore, revenues are slowly coming down year after year. Cost. You have to have a operating cost to operate the machine or not? 400 in the first year, 350 in the second year, 350 in the third year. Scrap. You use only for one year, more scrap value will come. You use for one more year, lesser scrap will come. You use for full life, scrap will be very less. Okay? This is the information that is being given. Okay? So please everyone. Just don't sit before the monitor and see and watch whatever I am explaining. Put some effort in understanding these numbers. So your exams are in May 24. I said, listen to the lecture and do ISM problems. Means how much confidently I am telling. You want to get that much confidence. Please follow the session properly. Don't be so lenient. Ah, YouTube video. Anyway, it will be there even after two days, three days. Please it's your career, it's your exams. Okay. When I am taking so much of care in delivering this concept, please, you also pay same attention, complete everything during the live itself. Okay. So, take the example. You need not write anything in your notes, but analyze the information. Don't just listen to what I am discussing. Okay. See there.
okay analyze the question everyone on live please reply did you analyze the question shall we begin okay please listen carefully let us analyze this and solve first i am taking this information summary see here first thing question came in examination first step number 1 analyzing right on analyzing cash flows analyzing cash flows okay first analyzing cash flow first point number 1 the life of this machine is 3 years you have three options now you can replace the machine at the end of first year you can replace the machine at the end of second year you can replace the machine at the end of third year how many options do we have three options number 1 you can replace a machine at the end of first year you can replace the machine at the end of second year you may replace the machine also at the end of third year you have three options left for you in this three options you have to choose any one okay sir how do i know which one will be better therefore step number 1 first you should analyze all the given cash flows okay then you will never commit a mistake let's see right now replace at one year underline replace at one year please complete writing in the class itself so go on i can't request because you are not in front of me so replace at the end of first year so how to replace at the end of first year see here if i have to replace the machine at the end of first year i have three cash flows now so four cash flows now first outflow Minus thousand, I will have a revenue of nine hundred. I will have cost of four hundred. I will get a scrap inflow of six fifty. Okay, so now tell me nine hundred four fifty four hundred six fifty nine hundred minus four hundred plus six fifty. How much it is eleven fifty. Okay, so. 1150 will be the cash flow at the end of year 1 this is zero and this will be happening at the end of year 1 okay so first point number 1 these are all the cash flows or to be very simple and precise i wanted to replace at the end of first year the following are the cash flows first one outlay 1000 outlay 1000 revenue 900 cost 400 scrap 650 okay don't to total or deduct them because this belongs to zero year these three belongs to first year so don't do we are just analyzing all the cash flows such that we don't do mistakes when you are solving the answer next no sir i am replacing at the end of second year what to do first outlay anyway you can't escape zero year lo outlay how much outlay outlay will be 1000 if you wanted to replace the machine at the end of second year it is implied that you should first use it for one year get the revenues for the first year incur the costs of first year In, get the revenues of second year incur the costs of second year and then you will sell it scrap at second year end but very very important when you are replacing the machine at the end of second year don't take the scrap of first year because if you scrap at the end of second first year how will you use in the second year beginning or ending so whenever you are going to do the problem be conscious in putting the numbers okay outlay first year revenue cost scrap revenue 
நைன் ஹண்ட்ரட் ஃபோர் ஹண்ட்ரட் சிக்ஸ் ஃபிஃப்டி கரெக்டா நோ சிக்ஸ் ஃபிஃப்டி யூ ஷுட் புட் ஏ டேஷ் பிகாஸ் ஐ எம் நாட் த்ரோயிங் ஆன் ஸ்கிராப் அட் த எண்ட் ஆஃப் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் இயர் செகண்ட் இயர் ரெவென்யூ காஸ் ஸ்கிராப் ரெவென்யூ ஃபார் த செகண்ட் இயர் கிவன் இன் த கொஷன் எயிட் ஹண்ட்ரட் த்ரீ ஃபிஃப்டி ஃபோர் ஹண்ட்ரட் எயிட் ஹண்ட்ரட் த்ரீ ஃபிஃப்டி ஃபோர் ஹண்ட்ரட் ஃபோர் ஹண்ட்ரட் ஃபோர் ஃபிஃப்டி ஃபோர் ஹண்ட்ரட் so this is the scenario if you replace it the end of second year these are all the cash flows no sir i will replace it the end of third year please write down first zero year there is a outlay outlay of 1000 okay revenue for year 1 cost for year 1 crap of year 1 revenue for year 2 cost of year 2 crap of year 2 revenue for year 3 cost of year 3 crap of year 3 okay this is how institute study material presented its answer therefore do over action let's follow what institute does okay but separately they didn't do a step directly here only they are doing the answer for clarity sake i am dividing and explaining okay now you will not commit any mistakes if you do like this and follow revenue cost scrap first let us fill this no scrap no scrap 150 scrap 150 or 200 150 clarity number 1 we got revenue first year second year third year 900 800 700 900 Next cost 450 Sorry 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450 450
0.8264.7513 okay take it 900 into point 9091 900 into 0.9091 818.19 415 into 0.8264 e71.88 at the end of first year i am going to select 650 Oh, very sorry, I've taken different discount rates. I'm very, very sorry. So, 10% means 0 0.9091, 0 0.9091. I'm very, very sorry, 0.9091. So, 900 into 0 0.9091, 818.19. Four fifty into point nine zero nine one four not nine point zero nine or four not nine point one zero six fifty into point nine zero nine one five ninety point nine two. This is a discounted outflow net eight eighteen point one nine minus four not nine point one plus five ninety point nine two. is exactly a thousand if you observe clearly 900 is my cash flow inflow or outflow outflow sorry inflow 450 is a outflow 650 again is an inflow technically separately using the cash flows you can do no sir i don't want to do separately using the cash flows then what i can do what you can do at the maximum is you can use it directly 900 you are going to get okay minus directly the costs that are incurred 450 and there is a 650 so technically 450 is a inflow for you okay 450 is a inflow for outflow for net inflow for you 409.09 something you will get 650 into 0 0.9091 that will be another 590 okay 590 plus 409 something you will get so the total amount you need to take compare it with the outflow that you are going to put at the beginning of the year so simply to understand we can tell this way see here 900 is your 900 minus 4 400 okay 900 minus 400 will be 500 500 into 0 0.9091 454.55 650 into 0 0.9091 590.92 so 454.55 plus 590.92 that will be 590 so if you take these both the numbers you will be getting 1045 you will get a net inflow of 1045 and you are having a net cost at the beginning of 1000 you are holding out an npv of 45 this npv of 45 when you will get if you replace the machine at the end of first year sir i have taken 450 there not 450 it is only 400 so take the table like this here cash flow PV at the rate of 10% PVCF. Here, one, this is a net inflow that we are going to take. 900 is the inflow, 400 is the cost, 650 is the scrap. 900 minus 400 plus 650, 1150. Point nine zero nine one. 1150 into 0 0.9091 1045 this is the present value of cash inflow when you calculate npv present value of discounted cash inflows minus discounted cash outflows 1045 minus 1000 is the cost 45 is your positive npv this is the answer 
if you replace the machine at the end of first year next replace at the end of second year how it will be year cash flow pv at the rate of 10% pv cf year 1 okay year 2 year 1 what will be there year 1 i will get 900 i will also incur a cost of 400 but the cost of 650 scrap will not be there so technically i will have only 500 in the first year second year in the form of going back and coming in only i am writing wrong numbers there so 800 350 so 800 350 400 800 350 and 400 see here so we are having a inflow of 800 minus 350 plus 400 totally how much 850 pv at the rate of 10% pv at the rate of 10% point 9091 next 1 divided by 1.1 point 8264 point 9091 into 500 it is 454 point double five eight fifty into point eight two six four seven not two point four four total one one five six point nine nine or one one five seven one one five seven minus thousand is the value this is a cost so net is one fifty seven net is how much sir 157 that we are going to get this is how 157 came here okay third i don't want to replace even at the end of second year i want to replace at the end of third year if i replace here cash flow pv at the rate of 10% pv cf year 1 i will get 900 minus 400 second year i will get 800 minus 350 numbers right 800 350 next 700 350 150 700 350 plus 150 so 500 800 minus 350 450 700 minus 350 plus 150 500 Point nine zero nine one, point eight two six four, point seven five one three. Five hundred into point nine zero nine one, four fifty four point double five. Point eight two six four into four fifty, three seventy one point double eight. Five hundred into point seven five one three, three seventy five point six five. Total one two zero two point zero eight minus thousand. How much is the NPV? Two not two point zero eight. Two not two point zero eight. Two not three almost. We have written. So this is a cumulative table given by the institute. But how they got these numbers? This is how you can solve. So if you replace at the end of first year, if you replace at the end of first year, NPV will be. 45 if you replace at the end of first year npv will be 45 if you replace at the end of second year npv will be 157 if you replace at the end of third year npv will be 203 now the question everyone will see these numbers sir if i replace at the end of first year it will be 45 second year 157 third year 203 therefore replace at the end of third year wrong this is the important step to understand this concept whenever replacement decision concept question comes in exam after calculating npv you have to calculate another one more step called as equated annuity benefit what is the name equated annuity benefit what is this equated annuity benefit let me explain equated annuity benefit means you can't compare 
cash flows of one life with different life cash flows example 45 is the amount that is obtained after considering only one year inflow this 157 is after considering two years cash flow obviously two years cash flow will be more than one year obvious na two years cash flow will be obviously more than one year then what sort of comparison it is so don't compare like that okay so technically how to understand this point behind this concept is you should not compare projects with unequal life projects with unequal life you should bring them into common platform and you can compare bring them into common platform and compare you can do this way this is the npv of one year this is the npv of two years cash flow means by the time you complete this particular thing i can repeat this for two times therefore you should not take it 45 you should take it double here so take the double next by the time you complete this i can complete this okay so therefore the point is when the unequal lives or projects are there in such case you cannot directly compare npvs and take a decision replacement decision question the most important adjustment or step is never ever compare npvs of three different cash flows sir if i should not compare what should i do what you need to do is bring them into common period of time what do you mean by common period of time for that only i have given complete notes you read there but i will tell you the conclusion what is required for the exams okay see there equated annuity benefit npv divided by pvaf one second ah uh, npv divided by pvaf annuity factor pvaf tell me i can replace the machine at the end of first year second year third year okay at the end of first year i replace the machine at the end of first year i replace the machine what is the npv 45 157 203 divided by pvaf one year only na 0 0.9091 157 divided by 157 divided by pvaf means you need to add the present value factor this is for two years so average them when you average you should not directly divide it by two because this is subjected to discounting so time also should you should discount and take 0 0.9091 plus 0 0.8264 1.7355 so 157 divided by 1.7355 it is 90.46 45 divided by 0 0.9091 it is a 49.50 next 203 divided by 0 0.9091 plus 0 0.8264 plus 0 0.7513 2.4868 so 203 divided by 2.4868 it equal to 81.63 now this is equated annuity one year one year average this is also for one year because we divide it by 1.755 okay next 203 also we divided this is on per annum basis we calculated on an average now you compare 49.5 90.46 81.63 which equated npv is more second year therefore since the more npv equated annuity benefit is more in the second option it is better to replace the machine at the end of second year this is the solution for this particular question i am putting it before you just visit to the answer and please give a reply everyone understood the concept or not please
we will continue so see here now we have completed understanding the concept of replacement decision so hopefully everyone understood that rather than doing like this i have separately done all the three tables in exam you can do like that but student has to first understand how this concept has come okay so pardon me for these wrong numbers concept is right but uh, i thought that second year is 450 but it is only 400 pardon me because i need to go back i need to confront i need to go back and confront in that i am forgetting what numbers i am taking so numbers are relevant anyway hopefully everyone understood the concept clearly okay right so the point is replacement decision questions comes like this okay whether they given a paragraph format or direct question format intention is same machine will be there okay definitely they wanted to replace question is on when to replace you should analyze okay what are all the revenues every year what are all the costs associated what could be the probable scrap value those you need to take and close the answer hopefully you understood the concept clearly next inflation in capital budgeting what is the next concept inflation and capital budgeting as i already said first i am going to cover okay first i am going to cover the concept after that problems with one example question i will first do after that we will be going into the conceptual discussion of ism book back problems first every topic one example first let me discuss once completed we will be going into that okay let's see alvi so the next concept we are going to begin in the advanced capital budgeting area is understanding inflation in capital budgeting please keenly listen to the concept conceptual clarity is very much required so this concept of inflation in capital budgeting will be discussed in forex also but i am covering also here just with an intention that though you did not cover there you should be covering here okay let's begin first one what is all about the concept of capital budgeting capital budgeting is all about whether to buy or not to buy an asset using that main technique called as net present value net present value means what every year we will consider some inflows discount them you will get the discounted inflows minus discounted outflow being the initial investment you will be getting an answer called as npv npv is nothing but difference between discounted inflows and the discounted outflows you will get npv but one thing you are forgetting while doing this all the problems of capital budgeting what we generally do we do with an assumption that assumption also you may not know but you do with an assumption do you know what is the assumption that we take before we start with the capital budgeting the first assumption we take is in this in this okay what assumption we will take inflows we will take a uh, we will take in the second column or not year cash flow pv at the rate of some percent pvcf okay year 1 2 3 4 like that you will take okay na so cash flows lo what you will take you will take inflows minus outflows and the net inflows you will take means directly we are considering the revenues from a particular project that's why cash inflows directly we will consider here okay so technically we are considering the cash inflows directly what is a cash inflow sales minus cost ebit or ebdit minus depreciation ebit interest you should not decrease in capital budgeting questions i will tell you the logic later base case npv adjusted npv concept i said na asala concept take came to make you understand why in any of the capital budgeting problems we don't reduce interest okay ebit minus tax eat okay ebit minus tax eat 
once you get the EAT amount, we will add back the depreciation again. Then we will get a concept called as a cash flow. These amounts we are taking here in this column. Okay. First, forget about everything. I will tell you one point. Sales minus cost will be the cash flow. Let us take like this. Let us take like this for understanding. Sales minus cost is cash flow. You are taking this cash flow or not? Yes. You are estimating 4-5 years of sales or not? Yes. How you are estimating? We are estimating number of units sold. 10,000 units first year. 15,000 units second year. 20,000 units third year. 30,000 units fourth year. Like that we are assuming. Okay? Now listen. 10,000 units into sale price per unit will give you the sales. Okay? Sale price per unit is 10. Therefore 100. Sale price per unit is 10. Therefore 150. 200, 300 like that you are doing. But you are forgetting one basic concept here. Every year why the sale price will be same? There will be inflation. The same product which is available at 10 rupees today will not be available at the same 10 rupees next year. It will increase. Therefore, where you are considering that inflation? I mean, understandable or not? First, all the sales whatever you are writing here are all taken on the basis of current purchasing power which is not correct because the price at which you sell this year the price at which you sell next year cannot be same because all the goods and services in india are subjected to inflation okay so therefore the problem comes here the analysis and the decision making will be wrong because you are not considering inflation without inflation you are taking judgments on capital budgeting which is absolutely wrong. Okay. Second one. Cost. You have to purchase material or not. Every year material cost will be same per unit. Cement bags are there. Yeah. This year 600. Previous year 530. Now next year it may become 640. Then cost also will increase or not. Then where you are considering? You are only considering number of units purchased. That means you are taking a cost standard and applying for all the five years which is not correct. Therefore, a concept of inflation in capital budgeting started. Which concept started? Inflation in capital budgeting has started. What is the motive behind this inflation in capital budgeting? Let me explain. We should not consider directly the cash flows. We should consider sales with the inflation, costs with inflation, Cash flows with inflation. Cash flows with inflation. This is the first thing. Okay. So now answer to my question. Till now we have done capital budgeting problems. I mean whatever the NPV problems you will do. Whatever the NPV problems you do. In that inflation is considered or not considered. Give an answer first. Normal capital budgeting problems you, you do not enter capital or normal NPV calculation. Inflation is considered or not considered. Tell the answer first. Okay. See here. In all the problems done till now, I mean in normal capital budgeting questions, in normal capital budgeting questions, we don't consider inflation. That means, what is a cash flow? Sales minus cost. Okay? Sales. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 years you are taking. Let us say for example, how many years? 5 years. Number of units, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, 25,000, 30,000. Example, sale price per unit, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Sales value, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300. Okay, number of units anyway will be same. So, cost per unit, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5. five. So total cost will be 5 into 10, 50. Okay, 5 into 10, 50. 15, 5, 75. 100, 125, 150.
these are the cost this is the sales these are the cost so what is the cash flow 100 minus 50 50 150 minus 75 75 200 minus 100 100 250 minus 125 125 300 minus 150 150 that's all these are the five years of cash flow now what you are doing here cash flow pv at the rate of some percent pvcf here 1 2 3 4 5 50 75 100 125 150 these you are considering here these are not subjected to inflation because 10 rupees is constantly taken this particular thing 5 rupee is also not a cost because it is also not subjected to inflation because you are not considering inflation there same cost is assumed to apply for all the five years which is not a right assumption which is not a right assumption what could be the right assumption the right assumption is you consider inflation and then calculate and then calculate okay now second thing what we need to do in this question sir whenever capital budgeting problems we do whenever capital budgeting problems we do we will discount using a pv factor or not pv factor is also called as a pv factor is also called a discount rate that discount rate should contain two things the discount rate should contain two things number one the discount rate should contain risk of the project the discount rate should also contain inflation inside it that should contain risk of the project and inflation inside it but i didn't understand portfolio theories la what you will do you will calculate ke you will calculate what sir ke ke is calculated as what ke is calculated on the basis of risk ke is calculated on the basis of risk for this much risk taken how much return i should ask then ke concept came okay what is the risk beta is the risk okay so if market rm risk if i take what will be the ke uh, what will be the return of the market for beta times risk i take how much i should ask like that we calculated portfolio theories like ke means simply whenever risk is there we will use discounting factor to remove the risk from the cash flows whenever i say discounting factor first remember this from the basics i can't tell now but logic i will tell those my students who are already listening they know these concepts remaining if you don't know at least learn and leave now okay first take a cash flow take a cash flow take a discounting factor hit the discount cash flow with the discounting factor then the risk will come out that means for example 50 is there what is this 50 10 percent 0.909 50 into 0 0.909 means 45.45 45.45 what is this 45.45 after removing the risk in that 50 we can get 45.45 that means this is without risk this is without risk therefore the pv factor whatever we considered is called as risk rate is called as what rate sir risk rate risk in the project okay i will ask a question answer how many units we will sell in the first year 10 10 lakh second year 15 lakh third year 20 lakh who said you here is there any bond paper return document huh? or public came to you and gave a promise huh? we will definitely buy 10 lakh first year 15 lakh second year how do you know we don't know that means these are not certain numbers these are uncertain whenever uncertainty is there risk will be there okay that means the 50 whatever you assumed here how you got 100 10 into 10 100 minus 5 into 10 50 net la 50 i got that means net cash flow you are getting is 50 okay so net cash flow 50 is subjected to two conditions number of units you should sell at you should sell should be 10 and the cost should be 5 rupee and sale should be 10 rupee technically three conditions are there if all the three conditions are satisfied then your revenue will be 50 rupees your cash flow will be 50 rupee so there is an uncertainty involved in the transaction or not yes that uncertainty eh, we call as uncertainty in capital budgeting uncertainty in capital budgeting this is a risk or not a risk a risk because this 50 may happen may not happen what is the risk involved of not happening that's why pv factor we will consider okay so pv factor is risk rate pv factor is what right sir risk rate simply whenever you multiply pv factor with the cash flow what you are multiplying will come out 
you are multiplying with risk rate now risk come out inflation rate uh, inflation will come out here 50 became 45 means what came out after risk 45.45 is certain 45.45 is certain your risk involved is 10 percent so 10 percent discounting factor is 0.909 15 to 0.909 net after the risk 45.45 is certain to happen next question as i said when you multiply a cash flow with a discount rate with what name you are multiplying that will come out risk you are multiplying risk will come out inflation you are multiplying inflation will come out if both you include and multiply both will come out at the same time therefore this particular concept says that when you take cash flows take with the inflation take with the inflation that means first year sale price is 10 second year sale price is not 10 it is 12 it is 12 therefore 10 became 12 means 12 minus 10 divided by 10 into 100 how much percent 20 percent inflation we considered how much 20 percent so you take the cash flows with inflation means sale price of each unit should be added with inflation cost of each unit should be added for inflation and then you calculate the cash flow you will get some cash flows now you will get 55 79 103 127 153 some numbers you got now tell me this is without inflation but with risk this is with risk with inflation why with risk as la 55 a doubtful 55 a doubtful and that 55 also have inflation inside it okay now the pv factor what you are using what i said whenever you multiply a cash flow with pv factor that with what you are multiplying that will come out if you are taking only risk rate here if you are taking only risky rate then risk will come out if you are taking the inflation inflation will come out if you take both both will come out so both is called as money rate or nominal rate money rate or nominal rate only risk i am considering that's called as a real rate that's called as a real rate okay now tell me if i take money rate money rate means what money rate means a rate which includes uh, which includes both inflation as well as risk 55 considers inflation uh, risk uh, both uh, both are included into it so we have to first calculate a mr okay some number will come how to calculate this is a question you multiply with the pv factor therefore from that 55 risk is coming out inflation is also coming out therefore this will be discounted cash flow these cash flows are considering inflation as well as risk and removing them 55 with inflation with risk inflation means cost and sales are hiked and risk means that 55 may happen may not happen there is a risk of uh, uh, that party getting that 55 therefore both of them put together is called as a mr rate which rate mr rate so when you multiply with that mr rate you got somewhere around example say you got 47 what is this 47 we considered inflation we considered risk later using pv factor we removed inflation we removed risk after that 47 is certain to happen 47 is certain to happen maybe some small small differences may come but certainly it will happen because i took inflation and removed it i took risk and i removed it after risk after inflation these are the cash flows now the question Sir, in exam what he will ask in exam he will ask you to calculate mr he will ask you to calculate mr he will ask you to calculate rr he will ask you to calculate discounting rate okay sir how to do that's what we are going to see in our next class okay next session our full concentration will be on understanding how to apply inflation to capital budgeting how to apply inflation to capital budgeting we will also do one problem once after that we will go with an area called as decision tree what is the concept decision tree okay. thank you very much for the today's session tomorrow session we'll meet one more time with regard to inflation in capital budgeting understanding mr rate rr rate and all those okay thank you very much hopefully the session is very useful for everyone please put up a message before you leave
hopefully the session is useful for everyone